hello everyone welcome to another episode of carlton people i've uh dived deep into the youth this time around and i've got uh young ethan daffy who represents one of the many younger generation of of carlton people and it's it's not often that i get to talk to people too much younger than me but i'm really excited to get his perspective on things ethan welcome mate yeah thanks for having me on the show terry um it's been a good series been watching most of them and uh yeah it's good to hear people personal stories of Carlton and uh, yeah, excited to um, see what you ask me. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Well, um, I want to want to start off the show uh, talking a little bit about how I came across you. Uh, you obviously, you uh, started up a, another fan channel uh, sort of on Instagram at the start. And now you've moved to YouTube called Carlton FC Daily. Let's start there. Yep. Talk to me about Carlton FC Daily and, and what you're doing there and where it all began. Well, um, I think it was near the end of 2018, which is probably a pretty shitty season, really. Um, two wins. Don't really know how I got the uh, motivation at all. But, um, yeah, I just saw multiple pages um, that did, like, not just AFL, but, um, like, NBA, EPL, all those types of things. And I felt like doing something for Carlton would be good, getting fans around it, different content than the main page of Carlton Post. And, um, yeah, just enjoyed it since. Yeah, love it, mate. Love it. You've recently moved into YouTube as well, getting your face on the camera, doing a little bit more, um, I guess, interacting and talking. And it's yourself that you talk a, a lot with Nathan, right? Yeah, yeah. Just a mate from footy, so yeah. Love it. Well, um, there you go, guys. If you haven't checked out Carlton FC Daily, make sure you do. You've got the links in the description below. And uh, yeah, no, mate, I love what you're doing. I love, I love the work and I'm always someone that's always down to collaborate uh, particularly with, uh, I think, fan channels and fan-made media is it's certainly the future of the industry because I think a lot of the time, you know, we watch footy and then we sort of wait until Monday. We watch 360 on the couch and whatnot. We get, you know, four or five minutes of, kind of you know, coverage for our club. And a lot of the time yeah. it's people that are talking about our, our boys and, and our girls and our club as a whole who don't really live and breathe the club. And so it's, yeah, it's good exactly to have... exactly right. It's good to have people talking about the club who actually know what's going on. Yeah. No, nah, you're spot on right there. Um, yeah, I couldn't really say it, say it. I couldn't say it any better myself. Awesome, mate. Well, listen, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go right into you. Talk to me yep. about the start of your Carlton memory, your first experience. Where did it all begin for you? Well, so this is before I was born. Um, this is... Uh, well, Carlton started through my mum. So uh, this is the late 80s. So my mum was born in Canberra. So she's from Canberra. She's a big rugby league fan. Comes down to Victoria to work. And um, the only two teams she knew was Carlton and Collingwood. So she kind of liked them both. Um, she didn't really know, like, the whole religious, you know, every, Collingwood and Carlton hate each other, you know. But, um, yeah, so she went to a Carlton Richmond game late 80s. Might have been 85, 86. And um, as soon as, um, this is a pretty funny story, but she was just watching, she sees Stephen Kernahan run out and she just falls in love with him. So that, ever since then, she's become a massive Carlton fan. Yeah. There you go. And as for you, wh wh what's your first experience, whether it be going to a game or watching a game, do you remember it? Um, I'm pretty sure my first game was at Optus. I was pretty young. Um, I had long blonde hair, a uh, little fella. But I've seen photos, but I can't really remember it. But um, I do remember, uh, I've got my actual jumper I wore. Uh, I was a little fella. Got a well, little well. jumper. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but my, probably my first memory was probably, I think it was 07, when Fev kicked about eight and made that massive comeback. Uh, I remember a lot of Essendon supporters around us talking shit and, you know, saying, oh, geez, we're on track for score 200. And then Fev just puts on a show. Yeah, that's yeah. probably my first memory. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, I kind of do remember the late 90s. I was born in 91. Um, I don't remember the 99 prelim on the day. I remember obviously watching it afterwards and, and all of that. My memory really, like, religiously kicks in 06, once we had come out of the salary cap scandal and drafted Murph yep. and then obviously mm -hmm. Cruiser and then Gibbs. And from there, it just sort of uh, grew on me from there. Uh, I mean, your you're sort of entering this wave of your life and experience now where you've almost seen two generations of Carlton players come through the system. Who was your first hero? Oh, first hero. 
This is tough. I've got a lot of heroes. Um, Fev's up there. Fev's definitely up there. Like, I'll just go to a Carlton game just to watch Fev. I'd sit down the goals, just watch his craft. The way he just, oh, you can't even explain how good he is. Um, probably Eddie Betts. I was probably like a real fanboy of Eddie Betts. Um, I've got another jump here. I've got it all set up here. I think it was 2009, 2000 something. I think it was 2009, little Betts. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Eddie, Eddie and Fev, I reckon. Yep. Love it. Love it. And so, I mean, for you, uh, seeing what you've seen in your experience, um, you know, for both of us, we're very similar in that we haven't really seen a lot of success. Yeah. Talk to me about your experience as a cult supporter and sort of analyse what you're seeing on the outside and what you've been told in the stories and, and what's your take on the club? Yeah, well, um, me numerous stories about grand finals and oh, we'll get there one day, you'll, you know, experience it, but are we really ever going to experience it? Like, it's just, I don't know. Um, I think we'll get there up there. We'll get up there soon. But um, honestly, I've loved the club, even when we were down low. Like, I know people give you shit, oh, you're a Carlton supporter, but you still got to support them through it. Because if you don't support through the shit times, what's the point of supporting them through the good times? Which is usually what I say. Yeah. Yep. No, nice. You know, it's interesting you talked about Fev as well. Really, we haven't, I mean, to be honest, we haven't really had a prolific forward that can really take charge or take handle of a game the way Fev did. I mean, obviously we've seen flashes of Charlie, we've seen flashes of Harry and, you know, a, a lot of our hopes pin on the two of them to yeah. really charge us forward. Um, but I think the reality is like they haven't, haven't done it yet and that's okay because they're still obviously very young. When do you think that turns for you? When do you, when oh. do you think it turns from, Hey, they're young, give them time to come on now. When's it going to happen? Well, the potential's there. You've seen it every game. Like last year, Harry's breakout game against the Dogs, you could see, like, that's an all-Australian forwards game right there. Like, um, I think Charlie probably push further up the ground. Like, kind of play, not like a cuda role, but I don't know. I feel like he got wasted getting put down too deep in the forward line. I think Mackay will definitely be the full forward for the future. But, um, yeah, I think they'll both be guns. Um, we've got the right players for the spine. We've got Wiedering, uh, Mackay, Charlie, all them. It's promising. It's promising. Absolutely. Hey, listen, were you, uh, we, did you get caught up in the trade rumours last year of Cadelio and Papley like the rest of yeah. us? <laughs> yes, mate, yes. Updating Instagram, Facebook, listening to radio shows 24-7 and yeah, it was heartbreak. Watching the, you know, the trade room coaches walking in and out, bloody is that, is that a calm person? But no, nah, just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, especially when you've got, obviously, we've both got Instagram accounts and you want to obviously make posts. And I remember having, I had a Jack Martin post ready. I had a, a Papley post ready. I literally had them as drafts because I'm like, today's the day. It's going to happen. So yeah. I had them as drafts. I was, you know, I had scheduled them on Facebook as well. Um, and, you know, it just, it just didn't happen. I mean, obviously, we ended up getting Jack Martin for a lot less than what, we initially thought we'd get him for, and he's obviously he's shown quite a lot, even though it has been one game. Um, but yeah, I, I think I don't know. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what do you think we need moving forward. What are some of the pieces you think we still uh, need to look out for and, and go out and get? Yeah, uh, definitely a small forward because I don't. Eddie's probably got one or two more years. Um, yep. He might be good term, but definitely long term, like a Papley. I wouldn't even mind like a Toby Green or something like that. Um, yeah, that's not many people talk about that, but um, probably inside mid as well. Maybe like an Ollie Wines. Yeah, that's what, our back line's pretty good, I reckon, pretty solid. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, love it, love it. Um, talk to me a little bit more. Let's dive a little bit more into you and, and Carlton FC Daily. Um, we've spoken a lot offline and um, sort of shared each other's thoughts and whatnot. Where do you see where do you see social media and its impact in in the AFL for you? Oh, it's major. Like since I started making, or since I made the account, like I've seen like forty different Carlton pages. It's just great seeing Carlton things all over the place and just like propaganda for the club. It's just you know it's everywhere. But um, yeah, it's definitely going to help the game. I see like a lot of people like you from other clubs and you. 
um, like getting jobs on TV and that. I think it's going to go across the board. Like Fox Footy will go down a bit, and more indiv- like individual clubs like Focus on. I, I think. If yeah. I word of that. Yeah, no, no, it's a, no, I know, I know what you're saying. I think like the industry, it's so different now, and um, you know, if you if you sort of put the work in early enough, and you give yourself that five or ten years of of solid, consistent work. Who knows? It could be a career, and it's interesting. I've I've listened to a lot of other creators, not footy related, but sport content um, producers who have done their own thing and sort of have had that crossroads moment where there might have been job opportunities, and then they've just decided, oh well, hey, uh, I think I'm just going to stay independent. Um, what what's yeah. what's your plan? What's what's the um what's the plan for you? Or are you just sort of looking at it sort of week to week, year by year, and just enjoying it? Or do you have a plan? Yeah, I don't really have a long-term plan. Um, Just see how it goes day by day, really. Um, It would be great to have a job in the media or something like that. Um, But, yeah, who knows what the future holds. Yeah. No, look, I I really – one thing I really do appreciate about about you and the work that you do is is, is the consistency. You know, um, you're always looking to upskill. You're always asking questions, um, sort of picking my brain and whoever else as well. Um, Where does your – where does that come from for you? Is this just passion for you and it's just your way of expressing? Because I know that you you added Photoshop skills and you added other bits and pieces. Yeah. So talk to me about your motivation. Um, yeah, so probably for a few years now, um, doing Photoshop stuff, motion graphics and that, I'd actually, I've always wanted to p- pursue it as a job, um, as a career, like graphic designer along those lines. Um, so I thought, I thought like, combining them like graphic design and Carlton FC daily together would just create, um, don't know the word actually, but, um, just like, I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think the last, I'm going to say, I think the last two months, especially I've noticed for you guys, uh, there's just been a turning point. I don't know. It just, things seem to pop out a lot more. Yeah. Um, you've always had, you've always had the nous and it's been evident, but something's happened. I've noticed anyway, in the last two months, am I right there? Has, has something changed? Yeah. Have you added something else in the last two months that you weren't doing previously? <laughs> um, it's probably more just thinking outside the box because yeah. there's not much content around. Like there's no games going on. You can't really talk about stats and all that. So I'm just trying to think out of the box. I've got ideas written down, um, you know, flashback Fridays, all that type of stuff, best moments, all that type of stuff. A lot of pages are doing that as well. So I think it's, yeah. it's probably good for everyone to think outside the box and step outside the comfort zone a bit. Yeah, it gets you it gets you that um get those gets those creative juices flowing for sure. And I mean I remember when I was coming when I was in your because you're in year twelve, right? Yeah. So I remember coming out of year twelve and at the time, you know, we didn't have social media at the time. Um the iPhone believe it or not, the iPhone one was out. Um <laughs> You know, I'm 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 in that last generation who lived pre iPhone and pre social media and post social media. So I've got sort of the best of both worlds there. Um, but I remember coming out of Year 12, and at the time, the mindset and the way that sort of the message that you're given from school and the world was all about. All right, you sort of got to pick your job. You got to pick the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life, and it's a lot of pressure to put on a 16 or 17 year old kid who doesn't really know anything about themselves or the world, let alone what they want to do for the rest of your life. And so what I think, you know, the, the unique and, and awesome position that someone like you is in is that you've now got these tools uh, and I'm sure you're aware of how different it was. And I'm sure your parents probably remind you, yeah. you know, that they're back yeah. in my day thing. <laughs> but you've got yeah. so many tools now that you can, you can create your own future as opposed to, like for me, it was, uh, I picked law, like law was the, favorite subject you know it was yeah. you know, looking like it was going to pay good money so you know you think about things like that um but then when social media hit it was like all right well this is what i like yeah. to do but this is what I, I sort of had to choose whereas now it's like you can just create something from nothing what's your mindset about that um yeah well a lot of the stats are showing like more due to social media and recent technology there's more jobs being created mm. so whether that being like you running a so like a page as influencers like ten years ago you wouldn't have heard the word influencers like people getting paid to post photos and yeah that's pretty much what I got to say yeah yeah 
Love it, love it. Talk to me about some of your favorite moments, uh, games or whatever it might be, trades. Wow, whatever. What are some of the moments that stick out in your memory where it was just pure elation? Oh, there is, is considering we've had pretty shit couple decades, like there's still been good memories where you watch it and you just get goosebumps. Yeah. Um, definitely one for me, um, which was a massive moment, probably 2013 elimination final. When um, Juddy kicked that goal, that was the first time I've ever hugged my brother in midair at the game, sitting level three. Like, oh, it was just, oh, every time I watch that goal, it's just like I've watched it on repeat, 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 repeat. And like, I know it's only elimination final, but for us, that was massive. Um, yeah, that's yep. probably my biggest one. What about some of the lowlights? What do you remember? It's, it's, oh. I'm going to assume that it's going to have something to do with <laughs> 2018 because that. I mean, that that, was, uh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you look at our list at that time, it's just like, how did we get, how did we buy memberships that year? Really? Like, how do we, oh, I don't know. But yeah, 2018 was just shit house. Like, every week you go, you just know it's going to be a struggle. Like, yeah, like you hope, we... you hope, yeah. you hope it's going to be one of those games where, you know, you bullshit it a bit and get a few goals on the board early and then um, scrape a win. Um, yeah, probably last year as well. Last round when we got beaten by Geelong, I headed down to Geelong. It was yep. pissing down rain and, oh, it was just, it was just terrible. But, oh, there's, there's too many. There's too many, Terry. You're asking me a real tough question here. I remember <laughs> the two big ones for me in 2018, especially, there was the, the Fremantle game at, at Marvel or Eddie Had, I think it was then. Was that the we one where it was 77 to 7? <laughs> At half time, I was like, I was like, these blokes don't give a fuck about our club. Yeah. Um, no, that was a real low point. And I think that same year we played GWS. And I reckon, yeah, I reckon they had all four of their bench down and they lost another guy in the fourth quarter. So they were like one short on the field and, and they, they were still, still romping it through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are just terrible. So oh, block it out of the memory, please. Yeah. No, it, it, you know, you've got to block it out of the memory, but also you hit the nail on the head before you started talking about it. Like those are the, you sort of got to, you got to live through those to feel the pain. Um, I think the beauty of our generation, and when I say our generation, I mean those of us who don't have the glory years and the memories of winning seven flags in 15 years or whatever it was. Um, we have to feel this pain because when we do actually win the flag and or multiple flags you know we're gonna have the okay. whole pa the whole yeah. package you know it's not yeah. gonna be worth it if we're just born into a, a a club that just wins every year because when the tide yeah. turns and we've probably seen it now the tide turn and for a lot of our our parents for example and our uncles and aunties and grandparents who had the golden era and then all of a sudden we turned into you know this shit show um they they sort of lose interest and they get really yeah. really sort of angry and oh um, tell me yeah. about it mum mum gets angry all the time all the time it's just like why can't we just go back to you know kicking a sticks and win every week and oh just yeah she gets real frustrated hundred percent hey listen talk to me about some of the the new crop coming through obviously we've gone to the draft every year since twenty fifteen um. I think some of these boys, particularly from that draft, are going to start really playing yeah. that consistent A-grade level of footy that really we need them to. But talk to me about some of the other boys that you really think have some qualities that are going to shine through. Well, um, last year I was watching a lot of highlights from the you know, draftees that we could pick up. And Brody Kemp is one for me that really, really will shine, I reckon. Yep. Um, it's probably He's probably been not really talked about due to his injury. Um, but he was supposed to be a top three pick, I'm pretty sure, before his injury. And yeah, he's an absolute steal, I'm telling you. He will be all Australian future. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I mean, no one guessed that coronavirus would happen. Um, yeah. The fact that we did what we did in getting him where we got him and then getting that extra pick to get Sam Philp, I really yeah. think that's going to be a massive advantage for us. And when you think about it, we also did it last year with, uh, with Liam Stocker. Yeah, you know, we sort of got that extra pick as well. So um, I think that's going to definitely pay us forward in having definitely. a little bit more depth at the bottom end of the list. Yeah, no, it's definitely worth it for the long term. Um, 
you can a lot of clubs you see when they rebuild, they tend to not bring in the old crap players that we were bringing in, like you know Brock McLean's and you know list cloggers really. I think after 2015, we finally actually did a proper rebuild. You know, everyone says they've been rebuilding for 20 years. I think that's a load of shit. Yeah. But like that, this is a proper rebuild from the bottom to the top, like complete rebuild. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I think the last time we did the rebuild was the Murphy Cruiser Gibbs sort of rebuild, and you know, obviously we went and we went to the midfield. You know, we went and drafted the midfielders. We had we had Fev, so obviously you don't have to go and draft a forward. Um, yeah even though we did go and get Josh Kennedy and obviously traded him. But we really built this awesome midfield. And uh, it seems like this time we've gone the other way around. We've gone and got the key position guys first. And uh, and then you can sort of... Because midfielders come and go every year. There's probably yeah. 10 to 15 midfielders every single year who go on to play, you know, 150 to 200 games. So I think... I mean, I know that I'm... We both were thinking very positively because we want it to work, but I'm pretty yeah. sure this is the right way to do it. Yeah, you can definitely see through Richmond as well. Like, I think over the last like three or four years, they've actually got um, they've brought in midfielders over the time. Like guys like Shane Edwards about seven years ago, no one would talk about it, but now he's talked about all Australian. It's just like you got to get those small pieces which will then lead to a premiership, I reckon. Like, not just getting the big, like what we used to do, Carlton Way, you know, have the most money, put, you know, pay money to clubs, bring other guys in, you know, just to use the um, power of the money. 100%. Talk to me about who's who are some of your favourite players outside of Carlton that you, you really think could uh, really add to what we have. <laughs> if, if we had unlimited money, who are some unlimited of the players money. Unlimited just money. Plop straight into our club. I'll go between lines. I'll probably go love a Jeremy McGovern. Yeah. Um, I like Jonesy, though. But, uh, yeah, Jeremy McGovern. Um, probably midfield. Probably a Brody Grundy. Him and Cripps would just, oh, they'd just be too good. Um, he's pretty much a fourth midfielder. Yep. Um, forward. Forward, forward, forward. Yeah, like a Toby Green. You mentioned him before. Yeah, Toby Green. Yeah, Yeah, I think we need that forward pressure, really. Uh, A bit of grunt. Um, Yeah, that's about it, really. Yeah, I I agree on Toby. I think um, I love him. I'm obsessed with him. I I think if there's one thing that we lack, and it's probably due to the fact that a lot of the bodies of the boys that we have right now are still developing, so they don't have that. They're not men just yet. You know, Uh, the premiership teams have seasoned bodies and you know, with that situation for us comes the whole, we don't really have a, not a sniper, but you know what I'm saying? Toby Green's a bit like of a, like, you know, a, like a Robbo or something. Yeah. Like we don't, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know what? Exactly right. That, that, you know, I didn't think of it at the time when we got rid of him. I actually thought, you know, it was probably best, you know, he was, you know, misbehaving yeah. a little bit off the field and, you know, to his credit, he's turned himself around and he's, he speaks about it a lot on his own podcast. And it is a bit of a shame for us because we lost him he went and went to Brisbane and figured yeah. himself out and he's really become their their battering ram in some sense. And we just don't have we don't don't have yeah. that, you know? We need that. We need that. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's a big year for for us as a club for many reasons, but you know, the, the idea that Cripps is out of contract scares the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> I just think, you know, the guy was you look at the way he plays, like he was born for the grand final, like the, the way he plays the game, yeah, bigger stage, you know, you just know he's going to step up in the big time. Um, what are some of the, what are some of the things you see us having to do to eventually climb to the top? Where is the improvement going to have to come from? Um, well, back in the last year really showed us how we can win games. Well, during the Barton era, we couldn't win a game because we couldn't score really. Like, yeah. It was just a lack of scoring. We could not score. Like we're winning. Like when we won games, it was like seventy-one to seventy, or you know something. Like we had to really defend hard. I think it's more attacking football we need. Like you look at Richmond, they just score and score and score and score. Like round one, look at that first half. They just went bang, 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 bang. It's hard for teams to catch up to that. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, you hit it before. Like you talked about the defense, and you said that it's pretty set. I totally agree. I actually think. Our defence is set for the next three, four years. I really do. I think there's enough yeah. 
experience. I think there's enough youth. I think there's enough A-grade talent there or talent that's going to rise to A-grade. And there's, en- there's, en- there's even guys who are going to be unlucky to miss, which you kind of need. Um, I, think yeah. That's, yeah. I think that's our best line on the field, personally, um, followed by our midfield and then our forward line. Because, as you said, yeah, we've got the forwards, but we haven't actually hit the results and hit the scoreboard yet. So, yeah, I, um, I do agree with you there. I've got a few last ones that I want to fire at you, just yep. the, the old rapid fire. <laughs> um, Here we go. Who is the unsung hero that doesn't get the limelight, but you think is going to have a really good 2020? That is... Um, I reckon that Cunningham. I reckon he is... I love him off half forward. I don't think he gets enough credit, really. Um, people talk about how he's injured all the time, but when he plays, he's real good. Mm-hmm. Like, silky, 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 silky. Yep. Yeah, that's my guy. Who is the club's next best and fairest winner? <laughs> what, 2020 or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Paddy Cripps. Paddy Cripps, so no one's, <laughs> no one's, no one's ready Paddy to take it off him yet? Not yet. Not yet. I like it. I like it. And uh, final one. When do we win the flag? We're going to look back on this chat in five years, and we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see the prediction. When is our next flag going to be? Um, won't be this year. We're pushing the finals this year, I reckon. Okay. Um, the way we played back half of last year, maybe like a. 2022, 2023, hopefully yep. earlier. Hopefully I'm wrong and it's a bit earlier, but um, yeah, around there, 2022, 2023. And yeah, hopefully remember that, have a few beers when we win the flag and yeah. Love it. Mate, you're a bit early to be talking about beers, but I like your spirit. I may say, mate. You are? You are? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. You driving around yet? Nah, I can't do my test because it's all um, stopped. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, that's good. Well, uh, mate, in that case, when we do get to the footy, beers are on me. Um, now that you're 18, um, it's been it's been a pleasure, mate. And as I said, um, you know, it's great to see the work that you're doing. Um, obviously, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, I love love seeing you know you guys really take advantage of the situation that you have and putting work yep. towards that. Um, keep at it. You know, it has its ups, it has its downs. Don't worry about your likes and your views. Just worry about what you enjoy doing. And, um, mate, look forward to chatting to you again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Terry. Go Blues, mate.